Hi everyone, welcome back to the Project Corner. Today I'm going to share with you how to create a Gantt chart color coding the right way. And the right way is shown here in this uh, schedule. Uh, but there's a neat little trick in here that will make your life a lot easier as a scheduler uh, within Microsoft Project. So without further ado, let's dive into how I got to this little schedule. Alright, so we're back again at a blank sheet. Well, not particularly blank, but no colors in this color-coded uh, Gantt chart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share the best way on how to color code your Gantt chart. Because what we see happening is that people will go to a specific task and double click on it. And then they will give it a certain color. And that way they think that that specific task has a specific reason why it is orange. But who knows that specific reason? Well, the color is orange and there should be some legend somewhere that tells you that that color means something. But it doesn't really, does it? So instead of color coding just a single bar, and let's uh, get back to the automatic. Oh, that's black. Now, how do I get back? I'll click on format. And I'll click the nice blue. And there we go. It's even more blue than the rest. Hmm. Getting back is hard this way. And it's not even in here. All right. Doesn't really matter. What I'm going to share with you is a better way to color code your Gantt chart. A way that ensures that everyone in the team knows why that color is applied to that specific task. And what you need to have here is you need to have a couple of flag fields. Well, the more colors you have, the more flag fields you'll use. Um, so I have flag one, flag two, and flag three in here. And if you're unsure how to get that flag here, click on add another column and click on flag. And you have a couple, roughly 20 flags that you can choose. If you want to have a real rainbow within your schedule, you can even use those 20 flags to actually do the color coding. But typically, three would do the trick. And what the fun part is with flag fields is they're automatically filled with no and you can select them to be set to yes and this one can be selected to be yes and these two uh, these two can also be set to yes now currently nothing happens within that schedule but the fun part happens when you don't select a single bar but you select an empty space within the Gantt chart and you right click and you click on bar styles. Now this menu, the bar styles menu, is the menu that holds all the color coding of that specific Gantt chart. It has the task in there, it has the summary task in there, it has manually scheduled tasks, ads, it has deliverables, it has milestones. And you can change each of these items. And you can insert rows. Now one of the best practice that I want to share with you here is make sure you have it on the correct level. Well, the correct level means that um, first Microsoft Project needs to know that it is a task. And after that you can specify the specific task before moving on to other items on the list. And there are a lot of items as you can see. So what we're going to do is we're going to add three values here and three different colors. But before I do so, I just want to change the name of these flags. I want to have this one stating that it is important, for instance 
flag one. I'm going to rename this important. And then this one will be called something like, um, well, I want to have this one to be green. So I'm going to rename this to green. I don't know specifically why and what that green means, but it's better than having that named as flag one, flag two, flag three, right? So the third one is going to be purple because that's a lovely color. All right, so now you uh, get the drift right where these names can actually be the names that you want to associate with a legend on why this color is being applied on the Gantt chart. Um, so for instance, the, the important uh, task needs to be red, for instance. So let's have that here, bar styles. And I'm going to head on below the task. And I'm going to click insert row. And now you want to copy a couple of things. Important task. And you want to copy the stuff that's on top here. Hold on, dive into that, click. And at the end, I want you to add flag one. That's all you need to add because Microsoft Project knows that if you enter flag one here, that you actually mean that it, this is a yes value for flag one. So it will happen from task start to task finish and it will be on row one. And we're going to select the red color. Boom. And we're going to select a full blown entry here. So, all right, that might be an issue with uh, the critical path. So let's have it as uh, dashes. That makes sense. And let's click on OK and see what happens. Wow. Automatically, without touching that single task, I now have a important task here. And I can do that with all of the other values here that are tasks, obviously. And I can deselect them. And they turn back to normal, which wasn't the case for that single task here. So that's great. This is the way to actually color code a Gantt chart the right way. Now everyone knows, and they can change this easily back again, that, that this is an important task. And now this is the important task. A lot of fun <laughs> with Gantt charts. So let's see that again, where uh, task two is going to be green. I'm going to head on over to task uh, bar styles and I'm going to go below the important task. And why below the important task? Well, I want to first have Microsoft Project uh, affiliate with the important task rather than having it as a green task. So if flag one is selected, it will turn up red and not green. Let's have this again. And here is flag number two. I'm going to have this as a green value and this can be full color. So I'm going to select it as being a nice little green bar here. Good. Now what happens if I select this one to also be yes? It doesn't change because it already got some formatting here. And let's see what happens. So it is actually the other way around where you want to have the important one being the last one to select. Because otherwise the green one will overrule. You see that happening here. Both are yes. And the important one is overruled. So 
So let's head. Uh, let's change that, and let's get this show back on the road. I'm going to. I'm going to cut row, and I'm going to paste row. Now it's on top of the important task, so the important task will take precedence over the green task and the actual task. Let's see that happening. So currently this is green and if I change that to yes it will overrule. So that's how to do it. Make sure that the most important thing on task level is actually on the bottom. So let's uh, let's change the last uh, color coding here and let's have this on purple and uh, let's see this happening. Uh, so I'm going to import that above the important task. And I'm going to insert that row. I'll say purple task. And I'm going to copy this again. And I'm going to paste it. And now I'm going to change flag 2 to flag 3. And I'm going to change the color to purple. And I'm going to have it as, well, basically like this. I don't know why, but I kind of like it. So that's it. This is a simple way to color code your GAN chart. And the fun part here is you can even double click on it and go to the custom fields and you will have your important flag fields here as well. So even if you don't want those flag fields visible, there's an easy way to change the values uh, to whatever it needs to be for you. So let's see that once more. I double click and I'll change this to purple. And I'll change the important to no because if it's important, it will show up as red. And now it's purple. Awesome. So we'll change this and let's see. Green doesn't take precedence over purple. That's good as well. And now we have a nice color coded GAN chart. And it is easy to, uh, to manage, easy to hand over to other people, easy to put in a template. And you can do this for just about, well, 20 different colors, 20 different color themes that you would like to have in your organization. So if you like this small tutorial, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. There's also a newsletter. And if you subscribe to that, you'll get this color coding can schedule. With that, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time.